Hello, welcome back to the Don't Call Me White Girl show live from L.A. Now, you can see it in me. I haven't had a cheesesteak in weeks. I'm officially from L.A. and it's no joke. Um, Phelps flies out to do the podcast. It's pretty cool, but we're beefing <laughs> a lot. So I might replace him with a West Coast guy. Way more laid back. Dre lives here sometimes and other time in PG County, but I'm officially L.A. Mona. Um, the makeup artist Olivia Olivia, she's been calling people um Satan for a while now. Now they call my boy Satan Uzi because of his Rolling Loud performance in which he repeated, "I made a city girl believe in Satan." Ooh. <laughs> I mean, because there's one thing he had he had spikes in his hair, white contacts, and red leather. He that's exactly how he looked. It was similar, close to how he looked in um. When I saw him at the Roots Picnic years ago. But I had no, listen, legit. This is how serious it is. Hey, Mona girl. Um, I want to know how you feel about this. Like, this satanic shit is so obvious now. Like, how do you feel about it? And does it make you uncomfortable? The only reason why I'm still going to this concert is because I wanted to see your podcast live. But if it wasn't for that, I wouldn't be there. Can you please address this on your podcast? I'm very interested in your opinion. I don't think you're going to like it. <laughs> I don't think Uzi's a Satanist. I don't think... Who's the other person they were saying? Sam Smith. I don't even fucking care about him. It was it's, it was somebody black. Was it Nikki? Oh, fuck. I don't remember. I know uh, they've been saying Nas X. I think it was Doja Cat because of something... This the thing. You think somebody like Nas X is just like trolling though? Or That's like, exactly what I think. This is yeah, the thing. Every nigga, yeah. It's, it's some hand signs, it's some um, numbers, numeric values, some regular signs switched upside down. People will go from how people are posing in high fashion pose type of magazines down to just album covers, covers or whatever. I think you niggas are obsessed with Satan. I, I, I really, <laughs> because y'all the ones always talking about, like, I never think of the devil, you know? Yeah. I, don't know. I mean, it's just, I don't know. I feel like some of these young niggas be trolling. Um, if Uzi has a line that I had made a city girl believe in Satan, I'm taking it as a troll type of vibe. Um, I don't know, bro. You know, I'm real big on, um, like, artistic value and doing what you want to do. And mm -hmm. it's like, let's just say you grow up, right, and you didn't uh, look at um, satanic fucking shrines and you like didn't you don't know the, read You don't know it. the history or nothing yet. So you might throw up something that's like, I don't think that there's this conspiracy theory that these people are devil worshippers and they're trying to press it on us through our music. I don't believe that at all. Mm -hmm. If you're looking for that kind of opinion from me, you're not gonna find it. I'm sorry. I don't I don't feel that. I don't see that. I'm feeling different from you, Gary. You think it's real? Illuminati and some of that stuff? Uh, okay. I thought that's what you was giving me from the back, like, yeah. Not I, like I feel like that stuff is real, but I feel like, like you said, I don't feel like we getting it via the music. I mean, babe, what's the difference? The real, babe. Yeah, but I don't think it's. I don't, but you I don't. Know, I don't know, but listen, I don't think it's like the shit that we see on YouTube. I feel like it exists, but I feel like we don't really know. Like, okay. The, the the way it's, you feel me? So you don't think niggas are sacrificing people? Like a, a one I read recently. Well, shit, we talked about the one that Jordan rumor. People I'm, think that Jordan sacrificed his father for, and when we had that conversation, I told you that the nigga that robbed him made videos with his watch on. Mm -hmm. What are you saying? I don't think that, I mean, I think it, there probably is some secret society or something like that, but I don't think celebrities are a part of that. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like Jay-Z or Beyonce the, are like a and, part of this. And they be saying like the Illuminati out of all of that stuff is not even the most powerful one. Like the most powerful motherfuckers that in that, that weird shit is like them European yeah. families. Oh yeah. Shit. they yeah. Well, the people that really pull the strings, you don't even know who they are. I know somebody who knew somebody kind of in that space and they was like, they want to stay out the way as much as yeah, possible. Yeah. They be out the way as they much as possible. Like old, like, Old but they bank reserves and shit like yeah. them kind of people like what are these niggas talking about but i was gonna say with the yachty thing like i think saying a line is something different because you're just Ooh, trying to yachty or uzi uzi, uzi, uzi. <laughs> sorry uzi 
Like you, when you say a line, you're just trying to convey something. That's like Biggie. When I die, fuck it, I want to go to hell because I'm a piece of shit and it ain't hard to fuck. Like he, I don't think he's like satanic. You know what I'm saying? It's just like he's trying to get a point across that like I was a and piece that, of shit to a certain that, extent. When the, and when she said the line, it made me think of fucking um, niggas always talking about walking on water. You feel me? Niggas got that from Jesus, but niggas don't even be Christian. You feel me? Like. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I just to the answer to DM. Um, I think you could be safe if you came to my show. <laughs> I don't think that Uzi <laughs> is trying to do nothing to you. Um, I totally respect context. people's, <laughs> you know, religion and your standards or whatever. But I'm just not on them boat with y'all with some of that stuff. I don't. I just don't think it's real. We've had the conversation before on this. We've had a fucking argument up here about it before as far as, like, what I believe in, you know. And it's a shame because I know some conspiracy theories turn out to be true. COINTELPRO. I mean, it's a lot of stuff um, that now have came out that, you know, salacious things that the government has hit. And, you know, to a certain extent, we know that people that run our government right for instance united states they have a responsibility to keep us calm so if they found a seven foot alien half alien half dragon nigga yeah, they yeah. might not put that on the they news because they don't want niggas to bug out mm-hmm. and being that everything has gone to shit that might end up on twitter a year after it happens and then there's that's a conspiracy theory mm-hmm. well i got a question for you then. now when we're kids when we when our kids you know, the next generations that come, when they're growing up, it might be the whole story came out. We found a seven foot head dragon, head alien nigga. We hid it from the masses because we didn't want to upset you guys. It leaked on Twitter. We told y'all not to believe and y'all didn't believe it, but we really did have a seven foot alien, half alien, half dragon nigga. You know? Purple nigga. He's talking to the nigga. Roswell, what's up? I don't know. But me, Demona, I. Suffer from anxiety issues. I'd rather believe everything's okay. Everything's good. To stay. <laughs> it just snowed in LA a while ago. I don't give a fuck. Ray Charles. Roll <laughs> weed up. What happened? I don't know. I don't care. Fuck the seals. I ain't looking. Yes. You think when Donnie was in office, they just didn't tell him certain stuff? Because, <laughs> or do you think he knew it was like, I ain't going to tell? You think they just purposely knew, like, we ain't going to tell him about the aliens or nothing I like that? Because he going like, be just blurted out but i have no idea but what i will say is that when he was in office i just remember feeling incredibly like we're fucked like i kept having this impending doom feeling like he's fucking this up you know what i mean for mm-hmm. us only because a lot of his shit was all about personal gain oh yeah so if he was in a situation and he could gain personally he didn't give a fuck if that yeah. mean he had to sacrifice all of us and that's what i know and that shit could have went down at any point sometimes i wonder how that even you know, I don't even know how that even, you know, got by as far as with this nigga being able to, like, really run this country. I mean, I, it was such a dangerous game to play, and it felt like a game. It felt like an April Fool's the whole time. But, yeah, I'm sure they wouldn't have told him shit. Um, he just had a press conference where he said, he's talking about Rihanna, right? Saying how he hated He's just a fucking weirdo. Okay, <laughs> next conversation. Um... This is weird, but somebody called me close to me pregnant and they are a teenager, but an adult teen. And I went on this long tirade of telling her like, you you don't need to have that baby. If you have an abortion, I will help you out. Don't be pressured to stay. What did the dad say to you? That's probably not true. You know, what did your parents say? They don't mean that. Da, da, da. And afterwards, I haven't talked to him in a while. I really felt bad about it. Let me tell you why. I feel like that sometimes you can be pre-programmed to think like having kids is a bad thing. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I also think you can get pre-programmed to think having kids is like this blessing when ultimately it's a... It's a matter of you taking care of your responsibilities. If mm-hmm. you have sex without a condom, you might get pregnant. If you're having sex without being on birth control or using some kind of birth control, you might get pregnant. Some people will turn that in these these pro-lifers. They'll turn it into, oh, it was meant for you to have a baby because God said or whatever. But at the same token, I don't want to be the girl that tells somebody to get rid of their kid. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. I can remember 
being pregnant and people just straighten out, you need to get an abortion, you know? And I remember how it made me feel. And it's like, I know both sides because it's like, as a mom, you want to scream to that younger girl like, yo, this is not what you about to think this is going to be. Don't do it. <laughs> Don't do it, <laughs> right? But at the same time, it's like, yo, some people have had a baby and that gave them this real, like, real strong drive to, to do some mm, yeah, shit and they really changed their whole lives. So... I don't know. My, you know, my mother told me. My mother, my mother told me that being that her mom had kids and didn't necessarily have a great experience with it, she would constantly be in her head. Oh, having a lot of kids is ghetto, and don't have a bunch of. You know what I mean? Like my mom grew up thinking because my mom was married when she had me, but she grew up thinking in my head, three and four kids is just just a ghetto mess, and it's too much. And what you going to do? You know what I mean? Three and four? I thought she was about to say seven, eight, nine, exactly. ten. Exactly. <laughs> she looks back on me, and she That's she kind of. Household. <laughs> She regrets it. You know what I mean? She really regrets it. Like, I don't know why I didn't give you siblings. I just, that was, you know, been, but you got to think, her mom was a teenage mom in the fucking 60s. So, of course, her experience was horrible. Yeah. Did I ever tell y'all that people would stop my mom? My grandmother, my mom, I think she had, she was like the nanny and took the baby and brought the baby to the ghetto. Yeah. That's crazy. You said that in a previous episode, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I didn't say it on my podcast at all. You right. You right. <laughs> you right. You right. Boom. Thoughts, fellas. Like you. Do you feel pressure to have kids with some people that meet you or see you or they say, Oh no kids? Especially you too. Cause you're married. And like, like, where's the babies? Oh yeah. I mean, for <laughs> we thought it was weird that as soon as you get married, that's I think this is just like a thing that people say when you get married just to kind of have a conversation, like, oh, you get married, when the baby's coming, like that's a thing. But her mom like really wants like when are y'all mm. having grandkids? Like, when is that happening? Like, does she have any? No. So oh. my at least my mom has like my stepbrothers like kids. So it's like she has grandkids, but my yeah my mother in law she doesn't have any. She oh, has God. my wife and her, her younger brother and no grandkids. And then all her siblings have grandkids. So she's like the only one out of her siblings that don't. So it's just like rough. Like she like yo when are y'all Gonna have some grandkids. I ain't yeah. getting any any younger. Any of my kids can pass my grandchild. She can uh, I don't know. It's 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 crazy how the narrative changed the order you get. Cause in like your twenties, early twenties, it's like, oh, you ain't got no kids. Good job. Like you focus. Da, 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 da. <laughs> and then it's like, you ain't had no kids yet. And you like, nah. It's like, oh, all right. And then now it's kind of like some motherfuckers be like, nigga, where them kids at? Like, yeah. <laughs> so which one you think is better? <laughs> like if. So you have a kid early and they like hit the twenties around 40, 45, or you like have them later and they hit their twenties around like 55, 60. I never looked at it like that. Like I remember people would say to me, like people that had kids young would say, I don't want to be old with my kids. And I thought that was so fucking weird. It's like, for me, I definitely had a meaning because I was pressured. It was mm. like, people made me feel strange for not having a baby. And I was 24. Like, but everybody I knew had kids at 16 and 17. Oh, wow. You Most people I knew, like, especially like, you know how you grew up with that cousin, y'all the same age, so they kind of compare y'all and stuff uh, like that. yeah. She was having my kids 13. I mean, Damn, she, oh, she was dude. knocking them out. Yeah, she 13. Had, she had her first baby at like 14, maybe, or 15. Yeah. But that was very common. Like, teen pregnancy was like a thing when I was growing up. You know what grade oh, I was geez. in when I first seen pregnant people? Mind you, I grew up in North Philly, lived in North Philly, and moved to the suburbs. Where y'all think I seen the first baby? Philly or Delaware? I know where I seen my first one, so I know where you seen Delaware. it. Delaware. Them motherfuckers <laughs> was fucking. My yeah. first time being in school with somebody else pregnant was in seventh grade. That's insane. One of my, one That's of my, like first shot, probably. Seventh, eighth grade, and they and both they had kids by grown men, some of them. And we even had a high school called Dappy that you went to when you was pregnant because niggas was getting pregnant, nigga. Mm. That was like a thing, like, for sure. My, and, homie, my homie had a baby when he was 13, but his girlfriend was older than him, though. And that's a little different, but <laughs> I don't know. For me... Um, I just remember, I distinctly remember people being like, what you waiting for? Especially like my getter. 
more and more ghetto family members. They really were like, because like, I don't think I ever had the conversation with my mother. It wasn't a thing. People were very surprised when I said I was pregnant. Like nobody like expected that from me. I think everybody thought I was gay. Mm. Um, <laughs> they did, but I don't know, you know, just looking back on stuff, I really think it's a personal thing. I think we need to normalize not mentioning that. It could be a thing where you're married and y'all been married for a while, but y'all have had five miscarriages. And that's not something you want to talk about yeah. over Thanksgiving. And that's why you shouldn't say things like that mm -hmm. to people because it's incredibly people insensitive. Trying, yeah. yeah, people go through a lot of shit. So it's like, it's really not cool. And I think on the opposite end, let's normalize not saying. Again, because if Shaquita got five kids, and even if it's five different names on that mailbox, if she's never called you for no diapers, if she ain't struggling and living mm. on your couch, what the fuck you worried about it for? Because she could, she's a breeder and she want to have a bunch <laughs> of babies. Me as the only child, I always picture myself with five, six children. I never thought like, oh, I'm going to have one or two. Never. I always thought that I would have a whole bunch of children. But I didn't um, like get myself ready for it was the nigga. That's the hardest part. The baby ain't bad. It's the nigga that come with the baby. They always want to see the baby. <laughs> nigga always. I I enjoy at the dough for this fucking baby. That's the hard part. I um growing up it's weird because like not all my peers, but like some of my peers, my parents was like the youngest parents. So I enjoy having like young parents. You feel me? Let me do my little one two. But I'm not even about to be a young parent. So uh, <laughs> do you feel like? At the end of the day, like, there's no way you won't get out of here without making one, or is it a possibility? Oh, nah, yeah, yeah, nah, they going, I, I told you, I'm going to be an old pop. Like, okay. my beard don't connect, and I ain't got no grades, I'm still good. Like, <laughs> okay. I okay. get some grades, it'll, it'll make more sense. I mean, I have a friend, I have a personal friend, he is 42, he just had a baby. I mm, think it's very common him. for niggas to well, just yeah, be niggas knocking them out. Niggas do that. Niggas be knocking them out 60, all kind of shit. Matter of fact, who's that famous that, person who's five? father just had a baby is it Janine Ago's dad or is somebody's famous dad that, that has a lot of children he just had a small child I know, I can't I know a small nigga, child nigga like Mike Epps be out here I think he just had a kid like a yeah, couple years ago two or three year old and he got like sure. grandkids that's like older than him like his kids on his kids that's wild yeah you know that's the whole thing because you know who they give a village. lot of shit to for having babies, Kiki Wyatt. And Kiki Wyatt is a fucking songstress. She makes enough money to take care of children. She has like 11, 10. I follow her. I wonder her, her, the baby that she just had is maybe four months because he just got out the hospital. He was in the hospital. He had like a harder birth. But yeah, her her youngest child is not crawling yet. Like he's a baby baby. And they talk a lot of shit about her. Damn. And she got a real fat ass. And that's what happens when you have a lot of babies. You should come on the podcast, Kiki. Do you we feel like, like you here? Do you feel like the infancy stage is like the hardest as a parent or more like this like teenage type stage? To be honest, I think what I remember I recall for real is they would call it terrible twos yeah but it was really terrible ones to fives and they're really psychotic at that age. like they don't have no rhyme or reason throwing doo-doo on the window banging their <laughs> heads on the ground cussing hollering screaming yelling throwing shit i want to wear rain boots in the summer it's just, <laughs> like that shit was like that and it's crazy because Amina was like mild, but Rashad was a motherfucker. Like yeah. that nigga was. I mean, we still kind of in it with Rashad because Rashad <laughs> still will wake up some days and just show his ass. And I'm like, why did you break the lamp and write your name on the wall? He's like, I don't know, mommy. I was just bored. So you know, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say that age, the age where they really don't make no sense. The teenager age is a little rough because I'm in it with Amina, but it's like. From what I'm, I kind of feel like I can like get through to her still. Like I'm not at the point where she's like, "Fuck you, mom. I love my boyfriend." <laughs> you know what I mean? Like she's still like, "Okay, that makes sense, mommy. That's fair, or whatever." But the whole thing is hard, and I do not recommend it. I mean, if you can skip past it, get a cat. <laughs> that shit is hell, man. It never stops. Imagine you got to do do real real bad. Your stomach hurt real bad. You got to talk to three <laughs> niggas before you do that. Mm. You gotta just run it past them. I'm just gonna go to the bathroom. You all right? Here's the remote. Here's the goldfish. Here's this. Open the window. Be quiet. Shut up. Don't swallow that. Pick that up. 
It's constant. And not enough, I think not enough parents are honest about it. I love the parents that post, like, I hate my kids. My male cousins always do that. I wish I'd never had these balls. I hate my life. Because <laughs> it's rough. And then, God, th- listen, and it makes it even rougher when you and that person just, I always say to people, imagine your ex, you having to see them and fucking talk about shit you know what I mean it's just like oh god and uh, I think another thing too for me um one of my uh my like my older cousins he had like older kids grown kids but then he had like a kid late like 10 probably at least 10 12 years separated in between and we I used to ask him he was like he was super like so I'm like all right you feel me he, yeah. if the, you know what I mean if he could do it <laughs> I could do it yeah I don't know I I, I don't know. And I think, too, it's the, you know, it's the village. I, people who uh, probably got the more family. Like support, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And for sh- and also, for sure, for Shiggity, if you could do it with the person that you love yeah. and that you want to be with for a while, it's good. Because that flows into my next thing I wanted to talk about. People back in the day would stay together for their kids. Like back in the day, it was totally normal for you to hate your wife and you would just stay with them because it would fuck the kids up. I didn't realize how many kids were like fucked up by divorce. My parents divorced before I could even remember. I don't know if I was affected, but I was so fucking young. I don't even have memories of them together. But some people like, y'all know I have a sick obsession with the show Intervention. Did y'all know that? You have an obsession with it? Oh my God. I forgot that I used to and I picked back up on it. It's bad. It's on fuck. Yo, first of all, they have a whole season of Kissington on there. Oh, you did kind of mention that to us. You did mention that to us. And then they had the one where Amber Rose goes to get her sister who's on dope and coke. And then she's like, bitch, I'm not going. My boyfriend about to come get me. And she leaves. And then it was one on there. And guess who he was addicted to, y'all? What? Hand sanitizer. Like eating it? Drinking it, mind you, I was in jail or like a drug program before, like like a jail drug program, like you gotta get out of jail, but they make you go through the program. And I was in there with a girl, and that's what she relapsed on hand sanitizer. She was fucked up, and we couldn't figure out like where she. We knew she was getting drunk every day, but we kept thinking like, who's bringing her the booze? It finally came out. She stood up one day like, I know you guys noticed, and yes, I have been drinking, but it was hand sanitizer. We was like, bitch, like we were so shocked by it, but that shit, that shit get real, man. I'm, you want a little drinky drink. Every time, like. That's crazy. Can I tell you how he did it? Yeah. He would cut it with Mountain Dew. So he would open the bottle. <laughs> he would pour a little bit out. He would pour Mountain Dew, shake it up. And what he, he said turned. was, once he would drink some and get drunk, then all of it went down. But when that first couple times, he couldn't take the thickness. I'm like, that's what I feel like swallowing cum, nigga. Mm. <laughs> When intervention, it's a real serious thing, but I got to avoid it because only thing I think about intervention is the nigga from City High. And it's funny to me. Like, the one, that one? No, that's the old nigga. You No, oh. the City High was, so you remember the group City High? Yeah. You don't remember the, the nigga, um, one of the niggas was, the singer was an alcoholic. He was a crazy. And they put him on there? Yeah. I never seen it, felt You never seen that me, one? No. I got it. Gary, you seen that one? Yo, it, listen, it bothered oh me so bad God. that felt. It bothered me so bad that that <laughs> meme was from Intervention yeah. because I had never seen that episode. Oh yeah, and I was so confused because I would watch Intervention and I would make sure I watched the black people first, and then because it was the real, there was the one black bitch. She was bad as motherfucker back then. She was on Soul Train. She got to smoke a coke, fuck up life. <laughs> but they kept flashing back when she was, you know, you nah, the, bitches used to. The 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 city the city high zone was like classic, and I I never forget the funny part, right? You know how they um, you know how they always trick a motherfucker to get him in that room. Yeah, that nigga was in the room, right? Um, and the motherfucking um door open, but he still, he had still had some liquor on him. They had like took the yo that motherfucker door open. And he seen him in the middle. That nigga took that shit, and that shit. <laughs> oh. and got his last who right before they took him off. Nah, that you gotta peep that one. It's a good joint. I think his name was like Rob. Or Bro, something the like newer that. ones they have one that does all these neighborhoods in Atlanta that we always stay at. Our Airbnbs are always in these neighborhoods. That was like a ten episode joint about Atlanta because it's because they did the bluff. Seen a nigga you know knee, Snow in the Bluff, seen right? Seen a nigga niece changing the tire. Listen, you know the nigga, you know the show, the Bluff. Curtis Snow. Right. 
they did they had the bluff on intervention so they did those set episodes they did the kids episodes and intervention really is a good joint but i don't think it's as popular as it used to be yeah but um I was watching it and it was so many of the motherfuckers like when my parents got divorced and a year later, I was like, damn, divorce really affects a lot of kids differently. It stresses people out. But back in the day, you stayed with your mate for them children. Mm -hmm. Even if you, yo, even if they didn't stay together the whole time, they would be like high school. You know what I'm saying? Like they would wait till you got a little older. Yeah, yeah. So you can handle it. Like daddy might live in the basement on some shit. But we all in the same house type of vibe. When I think Yo, about you, that, you. <laughs> when I think about that, that's what I think <laughs> though. I think in my head, like, I think in my head, like, <laughs> niggas was just stronger back then. Like, is that what? Because now it's like, it's all about you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Put yeah. yourself first. You don't have to run through that. But it's like, no, bitch, make a sacrifice for your motherfucking children and lay down with Earl so they don't get all upset. And then it, was a, it was a lot less questioning back then. It was like, if this is what I got to do, this is what I'm going to do. I'm not about to be, oh, why? And yeah. they just did, did I don't think. I think it was more like a socially acceptable thing. Like it wasn't acceptable socially to back divorce. then to divorce, but now it's more okay. It so was, people you're saying look more. It was looked down. Yeah, it was looked down upon yeah, to like yeah. to like do yeah. that versus you know now. It's I'm a lot supposed different. to be born back then. Look at your grandparents. Your grandparents been married how long? <laughs> you know as long if a nigga do that. Um, hold on, let me think. 40? It's over. Now nah, it's fifty plus. That's crazy. Then, bro. But the, the motherfuckers to this day. <laughs> yeah. Yo, no, no, I'm not lying to you. My grand, my grandpa had to hit the couch in 2023, nigga. Like it's still, you feel me? But they love each other. But it yeah. be beef. Like, Anybody who been married that long been through some shit. Yo, it be beef. Some, but it be you. Feel but she me? puts his ass on the couch from time to time. I love that. I Packs love him that. right up. Yeah, go down there and lay down and get the fuck out of my face. And he be high too, because you know, your old niggas, you know, the bed, the best joint, your old ass bones <laughs> got to hit the couch. He keep <laughs> flipping, and fl- <laughs> flipping and flopping, trying to get comfortable. No, Man. you don't. We got the, you know, the um the recliner joint. Old nigga got to lay still. He do oh, too yeah, much moving, nigga. <laughs> That's hilarious. Um, Yeah, so I don't know. I, I don't know. I feel like, I don't know. I just, I don't know. I've never been married. I think if I get married, we it's death to a death to that's a how, And that's what that's my thing too. Like I'm I don't smoke you. I ain't I ain't I don't you oppose nobody Jesus. else. But I feel like like look, motherfucker, you ain't you ain't you ain't we ain't doing all this, and then this motherfucker, you ain't here the next day, and I got all this explaining to do. You nah. ain't going to no lawyer. You going to Jesus, nigga. Sit down. Take a vacation. Go go fuck with that nigga that you like a little bit, and come you back. I don't go care. With who now? You better call that bitch on the phone. Lay down. <laughs> what? Lay the fuck down. Call her that bitch on FaceTime. Jerk off and you lay down. Word. With me. You Facts. go with me, nigga. Um, yeah, but whatever. I don't know. I guess sometimes you have deal burgers when you get married. Dre, how long have you been married? Two years. Damn. Have y'all set a goal for like the time period of when y'all wouldn't have kids? Yeah, in like two to three years. Oh shit. Two and they pushed years. it back already because they're smart. <laughs> They had. They're smart. Yeah, I'm okay with having it sooner, but my wife wants to wait a little bit. I mean, I ain't gonna. Is lie. it a definite that y'all definitely having them? Oh, for sure. Dre gonna oh, be a no father. You not. I can see Dre, Dre saying, gonna be I a pop. Want them, nah, I want kids. Nah, yeah, I can see. Oh, yeah, you do? yeah, yeah, for sure. That's I can. Cool. I, yeah, he a pop now. I'm, he definitely I'm gonna be a pop. Cut, real. I'm willing to cut <laughs> things so. back and be at games and coach and yeah, stuff yeah, like yeah. that. Like I, I'm, I'm ready oh, to. Oh, that's cute. I want to be a, a pop. For yeah, and sure. that's a that's a man oh. thing too. Like, n- not you like all right. Every little nigga not gonna play sports, but it's like, if, especially if you have a boy, you just want to watch what the fuck he do. You feel me? Like you want to watch yeah. the shit that he do. Like, Ooh, did we ever talk about the Natalie Tommy fight? Yes, we yes. did. Huh. With Quaddy. Oh God! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Quaddy, man. We love Quaddy here, man. We're big Quaddy fans. <laughs> We big Quaddy fans. Um, hold on, let me still can see if I got Quaddy a DM. A good promo oh, I already man. did a DM, didn't I? I never started with one. You got a voicemail for me? Um, yeah, there's a voicemail in here. It's but did you want to talk about? Uh, I know we were talking about the the. It's a little old, but the Glorilla like bodyguard thing. 
Not really. I don't believe him. I don't believe the story was <laughs> that because there's a video that cause now they keep. I notice how the media get down once they, they just start trying to pile it on people. Mm. They was barely. They was basically doing that to Ice Spice. Ice Spice, come on the podcast, bitch. Just let someone say it. <laughs> we was we was back and forth, back and forth. Now now you can't open bitch DM ever since that Drake story came out. You haven't DM me back. She hanging with fucking Northy and shit. I'm your age. I'm a little older, bitch. I, we can smoke a blunt together. You can't smoke no weed with that child. You can't twerk with no 13-year-old. You like, know Kanye is pissed about that. That's it. You see her with that wig on, with that little juicy sweatsuit on? Ooh, you know Kanye madder than a motherfucker about he that He be shit. wrong with his approach, but the, the, when he be mad and real passionate about some shit, it, he'd always be right like later on. <laughs> I'm going to tell you what. You know what Northy gave me on them TikToks? Cause every Duh. time, every time she do a video with her yeah. motherfucker, I ain't gonna do what you I think I'm gonna do. <laughs> oh, all right. Some shit is X-rayed. I know how to. Let me let me tell you what Northy give me on the videos, cause she always shoving the shit out of Kim Kardashian. She gonna hit that bitch. <laughs> oh yeah. Kim yeah, gonna yeah, tell yeah. her you can't go outside. She gonna go, mommy, and smack it. Remember that little boy from Doctor Phil smacked the shit. What the hell's wrong with you, mom? She and smack the shit. She already probably hitting her with. The, she probably already jumping at Folks, her. Folks, I can show you. 10 TikToks where she lovingly shoves her mom across the motherfucking room and Kim just a, oh Northy holding on to the wall and you know why right you know why right why cause the black grandma ain't here that see that's a point and a half cause you know the black grandma will whoop your motherfucking she ass she got two white grandmoms and that's it she got three white grandmoms y'all ever scrap with your parents huh you ever scrap with your parents like I don't want to talk nah. about it. Um, <laughs> my, my, I ain't, I'm not gonna fight my mom, but you know how you gotta like stand there. The, the last time we fought, cause you feel me, she caught me a good time. But the next one, I weave. <laughs> you feel me? And she got mad as yeah, a mother. She tried to grab because the they don't want stick. you to. I'm move. Like, all right, come on, mom. Like, and stop then you had to hold the stick. Like, I was. I, I felt kind of bad because you know what it is with with your parents is like you. Were you? I was like Grown. 16, 17. Oh, 16, okay. And I didn't know what to expect. And then she started to jealous and I was I'm like, I'm like, all right, mom, come on, she's like, we, we not about this. Did she <laughs> chill out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She calmed down. Now my pop, I ain't never Yeah. I didn't start oh, threatening no. him until he was old. I've gotten physical with an elder. I won't say who it was. It wasn't my mother though. It wasn't my mother, yeah. And they asked for it. Sound like an older cousin, aunt, something like that. Nah, the cousins, we, well, I rumbled all my cousins. Huh? Them bitches, any, y'all can get it now. <laughs> if you feel a froggy bitch, let's get it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, my family, especially my father's family, we fight. That's not like a normal yeah. thing. But I fought an elder, somebody that you totally shouldn't fight. Mm. And I was like 20 but or 21. They disrespected so, you though? It, fuck disrespected me. The person like was fight, like threw their hands up to rumble. So I've, I'm with them back instead of just letting them <laughs> instead head. of just letting you beat me up I fought back basically so old head just ran down though you like put your beaters up like let's go like basically yeah. was, like sometimes family be the most disrespectful though yeah, like, like, listen true. let me tell you something my mother really wasn't into like beating me or whatever and I remember my grandmother would smack me across she would bring her hand like this and oh. smack me across her face only when we was outside you know how disrespectful that is <laughs> oh yeah nah I ain't no no ha ha that shit used to I used that's to be hurt like with embarrassment it, right it was like it was just like but that's the type of person she was she was very like I don't know if you call it abusive but she was a bully that's what I'll say she was a bully cause you know what she used to say to my mom and them and it hurt them because they would talk about it later. I assume it hurt. They would laugh. And we would, well, they wouldn't laugh, but they would tell it without no tears. But in my head, I would think that's right. I should have boarded your motherfucking ass. That was like something she said a lot around her house. Damn. <laughs> Bitch, mean. Uh, I love you, the, grandma. I'm going to let you down. I ain't for the grandma disrespect. We, I ain't going to lie. If, gra if that's how grandma moving, she wanted to, she probably wanted you at some point to, to defend yourself. Act, smacking me out? Come on, man. Listen, <laughs> and, I remember, and I can remember it never was like, like an in the house thing. It was always outside. I remember one time it was like these guys that my friend had ended up getting these guys to come by. So, you know, boys in front of the house it was a big deal. And she was saying something to me. And I was like, huh? Like, I just didn't really. And let's say I was like, what? Or whatever. But that's the first thing she went to was smack and shot in front of the boys. And you know, they was going to laugh. It was rough, all the, you know? All the, all the times in my life I was disciplined, I only got hit in my face one time. And that, and honestly, to me, that is not allowed. Like anytime Amina has ever hit her brother in the face, yeah. it was like, stop the presses. Don't it's put not, your fucking hands on my son like that. Yeah. Don't play like that. Stole me. Yeah. Boop. Who stole you? My mom. Oh, shit. 
straight to the <laughs> to the face. Yeah. What the fuck did you do? How old were you? I was sixteen. I probably that was a rough year. <laughs> I probably <Right>? was um <laughs> talking shit. Nah, she was like barking on me about something, and I was like, "You feel like me? Flag, like yeah. flagging? Like oh yeah, nah." Yeah, but she was she was like it's like when you it's at a point your parents sometimes they just you can't I I am not about to call you a bitch I'm not about to you feel I got it but I something you feel me I'm like all right man you feel me and she, Dre used to get beat you been beat before only like a few times like I always got threatened to be beat especially my grandmother um but <laughs> like. I don't know. My my mom got like them old school beatings because my grandmother my grandmother was fifteen one out of fifteen in South Carolina, Damn. and it, they was like them old school like one person did something wrong line all y'all up every single thing and then my mom got the coming out the bathtub like oh, all wow. that joint. So my mom wasn't like big on okay, yeah. and I was one of them kids that even if you threatened me with it, it was damn near like doing it because I was like tearing up and crying and okay. like all that stuff before when I was younger. So yeah. she didn't really have to do it that that much to me. I was yeah. a good kid though. Yeah. I was horrible. Yeah. I, I can mind. remember setting fires on the train station steps. Like I was I got suspended. My first time I ever getting suspended was like first grade. I got expelled first grade. Push rain down the stuff, book that nigga arm. He I needed was, it. He I kept was, asking for it. I gave how, it to him. How old? <laughs> he was looking for it. Guess what I guess what I did? Gary found it. <laughs> And handed it to him. <laughs> How old was you when you was playing with fire? When I was setting up fires, I was probably like eight or nine. But you know what I did that was, was nasty seven. and dangerous? I would look for shit on the ground and smoke it. So I found a cigarette, but I oh, would yeah, smoke yeah, it. Yeah. yeah, I did that. I didn't do that, but I my my. Uh, I was a real badass only child. That was, for real, for real. Th that right there, to me, growing up, that was like with the regular like. The kids that was extra little, extra bad, like that's what they did. So you feel me? I used to be with niggas all the time. I used to be standing there like, yo, trip. Well, but it, do but it wasn't, shit. yeah, it didn't seem out of the ordinary. Like What, the smoking part? Yeah, like it, what they was doing to me didn't seem weird because I had just got used to seeing it. Let me it. tell you what else I did. I remember being like kind of enamored by the weed thing and being like looking at them do it or whatever. So I rolled me up some parsley and some lime paper slipped me a fake blunt and set my mom's bed on fire. And then I took the <laughs> sheets. I took the sheets to the basement, hid them shits, flipped the mattress, made the bed. Like, I was bad as shit. I can recall. Smoke when she came home I don't remember what happened with that because my cousin Maisha was at my house. It was me and Maisha. Maisha held me the fuck down, Cumberland Street. Um, <laughs> no, but this is what I do remember. She would piss me off because I was the only child and I was always, because my mom was just mean. She never took me nowhere, never did nothing. Um, and she had a really nice CD collection. So you remember back in the day that it would curve to an S and all that. I would count the bitches. One, two, three, get the third one, knife. I was about to Put say, yeah, I was about to say, one, what was y'all battles? Knife. What was y'all battles? I remember <laughs> taking Alka-Seltzer, hooking that shit up, pouring it in the plants. One, two, three is always the third is whatever. And I would sizzle them bitches down with a little Alka-Seltzer. Um, and one time I put coffee grinds in Gary, the bitch coffee. Show. Oh nah, so yeah, you when you were only he's the youngest though. Oh, but I don't know because I I had I I used to have them little bullshit battles with my parents both sides, mom and pops got them. What I knew oh, this yeah. shit didn't make my mom mad a little bit. Let me tell you something else. I did. We moved. She moved me to Delaware. I hated it. I was so upset by it, and um, I can recall like we had like wooden steps in the skylight. I carved in the wood. I hate it here. And she never found it for years. Like, for years. And one day she's like, Demona, come here. And she was like, did you fucking write this? And I was like, no. I remember the Blair Witch that just came out. And I kept thinking, hopefully the bitches think a witch did it. I did it, though. <laughs> I was torturing my motherfucking mom. Still in her car. Taking her jewelry. I did shit to my mother. You just didn't care about the consequences? This is what I remember. And I'm dead serious. I remember I would be think, oh, I don't want to get punished. I don't want to get in trouble. I don't want whatever, right? And I remember one day I was like, nah. And I was like, what the fuck is she going to do? She got to go to work anyway at 3 o'clock. Like, I remember thinking like, yo, fuck it. What the fuck is she going to do? And she put me on punishment. I was like, as soon as this bitch go to work, I'm going to fuck outside. And that's what the fuck I did. And it was downhill from there, boy. My mom, my mom. When I start saying, what's the worst that can happen to everything, boy? Lord. Shit got dark. My mom, shit got my crazy. Mom, my mom ain't work when I was in high school. That motherfucker was home. Bro, oh, my damn. mom would go to work at seven, right? I would go in the backyard and sit. 
Soon as she left, I go back in the crib, chilling. I she used to have a little um, you know, you bring people breakfast in bed. I used to get that bitch out, dust it off, make me a little breakfast. <laughs> Boy, I see first Bueller, that shit affected me. I was and like, it's Fuck funny school. you say that because she she started to work like probably the end of my senior year and I finally got to like you oh, feel yeah. me start to like Mac like yeah boy I was outside I had got, okay. a, got a car for like the second half of the year and then I reached the pinnacle because in ninth grade I kicked out and it was like we didn't know what to do and I was so like oh my god it's really now you know what I mean like so oh I my god pen? I got kicked out of your pen and they tried to um they <laughs> tried to what's the word when you can't come back Expel. They tried to expel me, and we had to get a lawyer and fight it because it was like, "What year can you get out on your own?" Sixteen. Just to let you know, Dre, legally, at, at that time that she talking about, Penn is probably one of the worst high schools in the region. So you got kicked out of one of the worst high schools. Yeah. At that time, it was like it wasn't. Yes. What the was hell was you put doing? The chains on the wall. <laughs> oh. Yo, my cousin used to tell me the story. I used to be like, Penn was bro, that wild, did not happen. He used bro. to be like, yes, dog. Niggas was doing dog food in Penn. Like niggas was doing dope. Yes. That shit was decent. But uh, and the best fights I always heard about was the girls. It was not the niggas. Yeah, it was wild. I remember I seen a girl put to sleep one time. I never never seen nobody fall asleep at a fight to a one pen. Me, me. Knocked your ass out. That wasn't me, but I remember that. Um, I know I told y'all the one story what happened in school. I don't know why we always get there. About Miss about I can't even say her name because I feel like if she hears she'll sue me. When the lady held the button on me, I know I told y'all that. Yeah, it was like an earlier episode when you <laughs> talked about that. This I had a beef with a um with assistant principal, and it was every year, every year, every year. And in my 12th grade year, I caught her in the hallway by herself and I finally got to tell her how I felt about her. But she held the button on the walkie so they all heard it. <laughs> Cause I was like, bitch, you really want this pussy. I got right up on her. Look, I should beat you the fuck up back here, oh, bitch. Tava. I'm thinking, listen, let me, let me keep it real, because I wasn't that crazy. I'm thinking it's finally going down. She like, we could like she wanted to fight me too. Like she oh, hated so you, me too. Oh, so in your mind, you thought, so yeah. So when she gave me that energy, I'm like, bad. You ready, I'll yeah, fuck you up whole back time. She's she lying. <laughs> <laughs> she lined you. <laughs> and they get to run it down. I'm like, what the fuck, Miss Marsh? Oh, say well, I'm I, her name. Yeah, don't say that bitch name. I hate oh, that. I hate you know that what's bitch. funny? I've heard her name she before. Was an evil bitch. I really feel like she was she was a lesbian. She wanted to have sex with me. I've That's heard what I that really name think. before. I really think she was attracted to me. She had a thing for me because she was crazy. And this is proof. I get put out in ninth grade. And I ended up doing good coming back. But when I got put out, she really, like, had me shook. Like, the cops are coming, the state troopers, whatever. So when I called my mom all frantic, mind you, my mother never came to the school, never did none of that, always mm -hmm. was like, fuck it. Mm -hmm. They going to do what they do, whatever. Yeah. My mom went up there, and all I remember is her little ass head, like, because the bitch was taller. And she was, because she really was offended by the lady trying to scare me like that. Yeah. Like, she already in trouble. What the fuck do you get out of doing that to a kid? You know mm -hmm. what I mean? That's proof that bitch was harassing me. I always got into stuff like that. I've been hit by my teachers and everything. I did. I got hit in fourth grade with a book. What I was did? bad as shit, bro. She just lost her temper. Yeah, I'm gonna say she had no reason to hit you, but you was wild and proud. Yeah, I was yeah. bad. I got hit in sixth grade at the door, and that's why by the time I was in ninth grade, I'm like, next one of these bitches hit me. We what rumbling. schools was like public, but guess what though? What you didn't know in the state of Delaware, you're though. allowed to paddle kids, you're allowed to remove kids, and all this. So technically, if a teacher exercised that right, they wasn't gonna get in trouble, and that's what happened to me. A teacher got physical. I finally got physical back. I'm thinking, oh, I'm in the right. No, they brought out the old books. This school district says you could be paddled. That's a southern thing. Your principal can paddle you in the south. Real shit. Maybe not today, but probably I believe like you. I'm just like around. Let me tell you the years that it was really popular. At least while we were in elementary and like high school, now it might be over now, but for sure in the early two thousands, them principals could still pay them kids. I thought that fucking shit was out. only in the movies. Like, I was... and if you're considered any kind of slow, crazy, whatever, they can restrain you yeah. and all that shit. Come on now. And them people can't probably articulate what just happened to them. Boy, I went up in a school called New Beginnings. Jesus, I was in there drinking carton grape juice, praying to get out. Like baby jail. Oh, I hated that shit. And I mean, listen, you, you, ain't the, go, you ain't go to Ferris though, so you wasn't. That I didn't bad. go to jail, jail. Yeah. No, like I would always get bailed out. My mother didn't play that, but I would go to like, 
you know, like a couple hours, shit like that. You know, I was bad though. Like if my kids do that to me, I don't know what they're gonna do. Cause I can see me like, you need to move out, babe. Like go ahead and go to a group home. You know what I mean? I don't know. Nah, your kids for real, for real. This is my prediction. Like y'all got the rough turn. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all got um yeah so you know what I think that's what, so look look you uh <laughs> this money when you when you young I feel like your kids in a younger age I feel like y'all gonna have great relationships older you feel me like yeah. the way the way you are the way when y'all older y'all gonna be dynamic. like but up until then it's gonna be a little yo the <laughs> fact that my kids don't get along is what blows me like people that have at home that have kids that fight that shit is like. Yeah. Like it's all day. I hate her. I hate him. Boop, 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 boop. Ooh, crying and shit. Sha! If I had <laughs> boys, I don't know how the fuck I would do that. Cause like they not even at the same age group or whatever that like, they should be fighting. And they still do a lot. Yeah. I don't know. I blame um Amina because I'm a real black mom. My son does no <laughs> wrong. Um, do I have a voicemail, Dre? Yeah, I can play it. Ooh, let's see. Like, no, I don't have that. Where's Smush at? Hey, I've been so, asking you. I ain't I seen my boy in a while. Everybody been asking um, I ain't I seen I met this guy recently, and we have been talking for about three or four weeks. During that time, he went to Atlanta on business and wanted to fly me out there so we can go on the first day. I thought that was cute, and even though i never done anything like that, I decided, fuck it, I'm single, I'm going to go. The day I agree, he wanted to get the flight for the next day, but I didn't hear from him after that. So I sent him a few text messages and the text went through, no response. So I decided to give him a call and his phone was off. So about two weeks go by and this nigga pops up with a new number, calling and texting, saying he got hit by a car. And that was the reason that he had hit MIA. So, one, do we believe that this nigga got hit by a car? I'm kind of torn because we only have been talking for a short period of time. So, it's like, why would he lie to that magnitude? Like, I feel like that's a major lie if he's lying. And then, two, he still wants to go on a, go out on a date. So, Mona, what would you do? Felt, is this nigga lying? Dre, do I still go on the, out on a date? What do y'all think? I ain't even hear what she said. I she ain't said listen. my name. That's the question. No, I know what it is. I ain't listen at all. Not for so one second. This Let's is, run it back. This is basically you mean what? paraphrase or you went paraphrase, please, babe. So she uh she was talking to a dude or whatever. They was getting cool. She was supposed to get flued out. And the day she was supposed to get flued out, he said, I'm changing your flight to the next day. And after that, the nigga disappeared for two weeks. And then when he popped back up with a new number, he said, uh, my apologies, I got hit by a car. And he trying to, like, spin the block. And she wants to know, what she, what did she do? Did I get that right? Yeah. He's a liar. He's going to keep lying like that. It's not funny. I fell in love with a liar, and I ignore a lot of the signs. Like, when he told me he had kids and sent me pictures of little dirt kids. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, and I forgot about you. Shut up, <laughs> shut up. And um, I don't know. And I was madly in love with him. Some might say I'm still madly in love with him. Please run away, girl. Oh, my God. Because the lies don't get no better. And you'll never know what to believe. Yeah. Um, it's I, crazy. Some of this stuff don't even be jokes. But that's, that's to me, it, 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 just it goes back to that thing. It's like, why wouldn't she just egg the nigga just because it's a chance for her to get on a flight and go have some fun out of town, she's still considering it. Just say no. Like, women got to stop doing that, dog. Well, like, guys are doing what, folks? Because for we be wanting to hear what y'all think. What you mean? Say it. Explain a little more. Stop fucking with a nigga for the benefit of something if you don't fuck with the person. Okay, okay. That's what women get killed, raped, all of that extra Do you shit. think that's that, though? No, no, no. I'm not saying okay, that's that. Okay. But that's, a, that's something that happens, though. It's yeah, like, y'all yeah, yeah. had a whole gut feeling, but you be like... I mean, I think said that's gonna... really what you're saying. Stop, like, but that's the thing. I don't think you understand what what us when we wanted to be something, we just wanted to be. That's why you know it's that, not a logical thing. Yeah, at all. It's like, an emotional thing, bro. Exactly. It's like that's why so many women because they they make these jokes now online. Oh, y'all be pretending y'all ain't buy y'all ain't buy that. Y he didn't buy that. You bought it for yourself. 
You fucking right. A woman would totally get with a guy, love him. He be broke as shit. Don't ever do nothing for her. And just to keep up status quo, she will buy shit and say he bought it. Yeah. Because we just pressed on what we want at the time. It don't matter what it's supposed to be. So it's like if you're one of them people that you care about what everybody think and you're trying to impress your parents or you, your friends or whatever, you go that fucking far. You done bought your own engagement ring, yeah. child. I mean, Damn. there's nothing wrong with, you feel me? But if, the, mm. like, Damn. You, you also got to learn how to fish with concern. Like, what do you mean? Like, if you try to figure out if he actually got in a car accident, like, you ask questions as if you're concerned, but you really, like, fishing for information. Uh, yeah. I feel like you do that to me sometimes when I lie about why I can't come somewhere. <laughs> That's crazy. And then it's, it's, yeah, I thought you was lying one time, too, but then you, you wasn't. See? He thought I was lying when I fell on the steps butt naked Word, like a fish. I, I, was like, I mean, everybody was like, <laughs> <laughs> Is that bruised? Is that bruised? Or was it just ashy? I don't see nothing, but I'm sure but there I was probably but, something but, there. But, but you don't this, see that scab? Oh, I thought that was ash. But when you told me it happened, I didn't believe. <laughs> but I didn't say nothing out loud. I just text Juice on the side like, Juice. This bitch told my she I said, fell. Juice, can you please? And she's like, she really <laughs> fell, right? Yeah, Juice was like, nah. My whole boy. ass is black. Do y'all want to see my ass? Can we show my ass on YouTube or no? No. We that'll can't be, at all? That'll be a no. no. All right, well, fuck it. No yeah, problems. learn how to fish con with concern. Didn't I show you my ass? Dre, did I show you? No, no. All right. I, I never. It's not, I'm it's good, though. You're married and no disrespect, bro. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, nah, I showed Gary my ass. Gary, did you see my ass? But you feel me? Her whole... But this is the thing. She wasn't like, should I still pursue? She was like, well, should I still fly? Like, Should I still go on a date? Let me tell you why. Because she's already has it mapped out. Yeah. She never been flown out. Feels cool. The city girls rap about it. Right. You know, <laughs> everybody want to be. And that's this crazy thing. And I know that for sure because they come ask me because they swear I'm about their life. So how often do I get offered to get flew out? How often do I get flew out? Never. You get offered outside of business. I'm scared to say what I want to say. Excuse me. <laughs> you could go. Yeah. <laughs> just, just trying to make sure I wasn't insulting him. <laughs> um, all seriousness, I don't want to upset you. Um, thank you. Phelps gets flued out more than me. Mm. No punchline. That's a fact. But these bitches think I'm so cool and like hip. Like, girl, mm. I'm scary. I mean, I'm doing it to the same boy it, from last see, year. All right, even me, like, I'm gonna make sure you feel me. I know motherfuckers in the, 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 the area I'm going to. You feel me? Like, I ain't, it ain't never just me, even though it be me. You feel me? All right, well, let's go wrap it up. Want to manifest anything or are you good? Not really. Um, 21 days. Yeah, that's why I went After manifest. LA, I'm in the gym. We in the gym after. We in the gym. We in the gym. After LA, we in the gym. I want me a trainer from up top, not New York prison. <laughs> Pull ups and dips. See you next week. <laughs>